Fido, come, 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 get over here, come, come. Hey, it's Annika here with Sniff Dog. Are you dreaming of the day that you get to let your dog off leash like everybody else? Are you terrified to let your dog off the leash because you know they simply will not come back when you call them to? I'm here today to give you part one of a two-part video series to make sure that your dog comes back when called once and for all. At Sniff Dog, we're here to teach you how to speak dog. If you can have a better understanding of your dog, you can have a relationship built off trust and fun. We want to come on this wonderful journey of pet ownership with you to help empower the love and connection between you and your pup. Okay, so you have a dog that doesn't listen right away when you ask them to come when called. Join the club. This is actually a very difficult skill for your dog and you to master. As always, there's gonna be a lot of little tidbits in today's video, so make sure that you download the training tip sheet that I made just for you to remember all of today's details. Let's get started. Now, really understanding where your dog is coming from and understanding why they ignore you is really important in the first place. So I'll just start by telling you, why would your dog come to you when you ask them to, when you've given them freedom, when they have you all day? It's simply not in their best interest often to listen to our requests to come towards us. Today's three training tips are, tip number one, teach your dog come in the comforts of your home from 10 feet away maximum. Tip number two, practice come in a slightly more distracting environment from 10 feet away maximum. And tip number three, practice come outside on a leash or on a long line in a quiet, non-distracting environment from 10 feet away maximum. It doesn't matter so much your dog's age when it comes to mastering this skill. You can train this to a dog of any age, but obviously the younger you start, the better it is for them to have a general understanding that it's in their best interest to listen to you when you call them. If you think about it, oftentimes you're asking your dog to come to you away from potential conflict or away from a squirrel, or come to you so you can give them a bath, or come to you so you can clip them up and leave the dog park. What happens is they begin to think that Fido come actually means Fido come over here, leave the fun stuff and come to me, I'm boring, or come to me, I've got something that you don't want to happen. And so come actually becomes a word that they think is a poisoned word. Come means bad things are going to happen if you come here. We want to teach your dog that coming when called is actually always in their best interest and we are very willing to pay them for that very hard job that they have done. So not only does your dog very quickly realize that coming when called is actually not a good thing for them to do, we also accidentally practice it over and over in too difficult of environments. Meaning, you have to practice in a controlled indoor environment thousands of times before you then go practice your dog's recall in a dog park. A few extra very important points for you to understand is that if we're gonna ask our dogs to choose us instead of choosing all of the other exciting things outside in their natural environment, like squirrels, birds, poop, other dogs, people, kids, bicycles, etc. We have to be willing to be very enticing in our request. All that is to say, you better be damn well exciting when you ask them to come to you because if you're boring, they have no incentive at all. You will never, ever, ever repeat the cue. I have to put my foot in my own mouth sometimes because if you call them to come, I want them to know you mean it one time when you say it not 16 times. You never wanna be the person that sounds like this at the dog park. Fido, come, 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 get over here, come, come. And then they hear your tone shift to negative and they're like, oh shit, I better listen. I want them to listen the first time you say it because you taught them thousands of times over that when you say it one time, you mean it and they get really good things and a lot of incentive, AKA you acting a fool to get them to come to you. Also, watch how many times you say the word come really randomly throughout the day when you don't actually mean it. When you say Fido, come, in your really excited tone, you have to be intentional. You have to be aware and you have to mean it. We do not want them learning that come is optional, you don't follow through, it doesn't really mean anything to them, and worse is that come means bad things happen to them. 
Okay, okay, I know you wanna to get to the training part, but there's a lot to learn before you can actually be a good trainer in terms of recall, so bear with me. General recall practices can be broken into two sections. One is how far are you? How much distance is between your dog and you when you ask them to come? You're gonna start with very little distance and then work your way up foot by foot, a few meters at a time until your dog can listen to that recall cue from farther and farther away from you. Once you've nailed distance and they're able to come from 30 feet reliably, that's when you would start to add distraction and that's where video two comes in. All of today's training will be done in the comforts of your home to start with and then we'll progress to more of an outdoor real life situation. First, we master it when we are in control. All right, let's get started. So for today's video and these exercises, you are going to need your dog's most favorite, loved, food reward, and I am not talking dog treats. I am talking steak, chicken, cheese, rollover, whatever you got that they want. And you're gonna make sure that they only get that treat for doing the recall games. The second thing you're going to need is a hell of a lot of patience and a good sense of humor because you are going to need to be very silly to achieve your recall goals. Okay, training tip. Okay, training tip number one is to teach your dog to come when called in the comforts of a controlled, non-distracting and safe environment, such as your home. So all you're gonna do is make sure that you have those delicious treats hidden in a pocket or behind your back and call your dog's name, ask them to come and energetically try to invite them to come into your space from about 10 feet away. You're gonna repeat this as many times throughout the day as you possibly can while catching them off guard at times so that they start to believe that hearing the word come means they're about to get a chunk of steak. Cedar here today is recalling for Manchego cheese. Lucky bugger. Cedar, come. Yes. Good boy. A quick pro tip is to never stand still after you've called them. Try to be enticing with both your hands and your gestures backwards. Here, come. If they don't come to you, do not repeat yes, the cue. Make boy. any kind of silly movements, motions, or noises to entice them to come to you. Once your dog is loving the game come in the house, you can start to add more and more distance. So starting with 10 feet is in your best interest and you can build on it from there. If they can do it from 10 feet, you can start to do it around corners or from room to room. Cedar, come. Good job. Once they're good at training tip number one, 15 to 20 times a day, totally randomly and not necessarily in order, you can move to training tip number two. Tip number two, practice come in a slightly more distracting environment from 10 feet away maximum. Now it might seem straightforward to some of you, but some of us need the reminder that we can't just use come now that we've mastered it inside now in the dog park we have to add a little bit more of a distracting environment so we're not quite ready to get outside yet but training tip number two is to practice this same fido come skill in a newer environment that is still inside this could be in a hallway in somebody else's house in a level of the house they're not used to going to etc now, something I said before was a rule is you're not allowed to repeat the cue, but you also have to say it and mean it and follow through. We don't want them learning come is an option. So if at any point during tip number two, you get stuck and they stop responding to the come word because now it's in a newer, more stimulating indoor environment, then you have to cheerlead for 30 seconds until they come to you. If 30 seconds of cheerleading and acting crazy and all kinds of strange no noises and movements doesn't work, then you have to go towards them, maybe give them a little magnet lure and bribe them to come into you while backing up. You have to follow through. So whatever it takes to get them to come to you in the end without repeating the cue is really, really key that you commit to. Okay, once you've been successful 20, 30, 50, 100, 200 times in these indoor environments, you are now finally ready to move on to training tip number three. All right, you're ready for training tip number three. This is now taking this 
become exercise from inside in a controlled environment to now outside in a slightly more distracting environment. Remember, we're still not practicing it at the dog park throughout this entire time. Now taking this skill outside is a totally different playing field for your dog. It is way harder to respond to come outside than it is inside. That's because the natural environment is full of distractions that you are not in control of. It is absolutely important that you keep your dog on a six foot leash or even a 15 to 30 foot training long line, not a retractable leash. Now outside is really hard for them, so we have to take this slow and lower our criteria a little bit. Our expectation inside was maybe 10 to 30 feet towards the end there, and now you're outside and you're gonna practice the same thing. You might hope that your dog is able to come when called off just a six foot distance from you. So just go down the street, go for a little walk when they're not distracted or committed to something else and they're just moseying along, surprise them with the Fido come, cue and back up excitedly without applying tension to the leash. When they choose to come into your space, yes, and feed them as you did in all of the inside exercises. Repeat this training step outside many, many times when they do not expect it, but make sure they're not already distracted by something else. That is in video number two. I haven't said this, but I wanna make it clear. We are not suggesting that you do this in a big green space at this point. Practicing come outside should be on cement first with very little distance first. And if you're having great success with it with the six foot distance, Feel free to try to give them a little bit more of that long line if you have one where they're able to go 10 feet from you outside on the cement and return and come when called. And then 12 feet, 14 feet, 20 feet, 25 feet. Once your dog is successful at any distance, you can start to give them a little bit more and more freedom in this mildly distracting environment and hope that they can still respond the way they have been successfully in the past. Now I've dabbled some of these little things to avoid throughout this video, but definite things to avoid when training a recall with your dog is do not repeat the cue. Repeating the cue over and over and over like a parrot only tells them that that word doesn't mean very much. You also wanna make sure that you don't have a negative tone when you're calling them. Remember, you're asking them to choose you when they have the option of many other things. I don't think I mentioned this one yet and it's super important. Never ever ask them to come and use that special word that you've created this really strong positive association of without having the good stuff on you. If you call them to come, you better damn well be willing to pay them with the manchego cheese or the steak or the chicken. Don't ask them to come without having that food with you. Okay, another really big no-no is calling them when you don't think that they're gonna be successful. With recall, it's very important you set them up for success. I wanna call them when I'm pretty much sure that they are going to hear me and respond accurately. Okay, don't you go using this special come recall that we've now created in really hard environments like the dog park. You're not ready for that until you see video number two that's coming next week, so hang tight. Thank you so much for watching video one of two on how to make sure your dog comes when called. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you're watching from YouTube, please make sure that you subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to press the notify button that tells you when our next video has come out. Leave a comment so we know what you wanna learn more about. If you're following us on Facebook, make sure that you like, share, and tell your friends, and follow us on Instagram. We give you lots of tidbits throughout the week. Lastly, and most importantly, download the training tip sheet. I gave you so much information today. There's no way that you remembered all of that. Okay, I'm out of here. Enjoy the bloopers.